In this video, we're gonna scan this totem pole and this house using our drone and bring it into Unreal Engine 5. Then we're gonna make it big, change the time of day, put it in a forest, and while we're at it, why don't we make it a cinematic? And the best part is that you can even customize the texture of your scans to make them super realistic. By the end of this video, you will learn how to create the highest quality 3D models using Polycam. We'll show you three different experiments. The oldest crane in Vancouver, the wooden structure in the water, and the totem poles. From these experiments, you're gonna see all of our mistakes and learn from our best tips. We're also going to walk you through how to customize the texture of your scans using Substance Painter and how we created our cinematic in Unreal Engine 5. So a couple of weeks ago, Polycam reached out to us and challenged us to create the cleanest scan for an Unreal cinematic. And guess what? Bad decisions never says no to a challenge. And we wanted to make it big but we had a problem. These objects are extremely huge, so we couldn't use our phones as per usual. And that is why we had to call it the drone. Because with the drones, we can now go to higher altitudes and capture any angle that we want. Plus, it's really fun. Let's start. The most important factor you need to consider for photogrammetry is lighting. Remember, whatever you capture will end up printed on your 3D model. So if you have harsh lights, or shadows, those also will be printed on your model. We don't want that. If you're shooting outdoors, you have absolutely no control over the lighting. And that means you have to choose your time wisely. The best time to go ahead and shoot outdoors is on overcast and cloudy days. And that is because the clouds act as a softbox to the sun, causing uniform lighting and shadows on your models. Since we're in the middle of a hot summer here in Vancouver, the sun is out pretty much all day long. And so for our very first scan, we had to get up as early as sunrise, and that was 5 a.m. Huh, Farhad, let's go. Where are we going now? We are going to the oldest crane in Vancouver. We are gonna scan the whole crane, and we're gonna bring it into Unreal Engine 5. Here is how we started taking our photos. For our first orbit, we always want to keep the entire subject within the frame. And so we went all the way up in the air, pointed the camera down and started taking photos while the entire crane was visible in the shot. If you move too much in between each frame, the softwares that will do the processing will have a hard time figuring out what your model looks like. So very small movements between each frame. That's really important. After our first orbit, we try to go closer to the crane. And although we lost visibility of part of the crane, it's completely fine because now we're going in for more detail. After that orbit, we try to go on lower altitudes to try to cover angles that we haven't covered before. Halfway through, we realize this bird clearly doesn't like our drone. Dude, it keeps... Oh, break it down. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That wasn't our only problem though. Nope, that was it. That's all that happened. Our skilled and experienced drone pilot flew our drone into the trees. It was an accident, okay? <laughs> Bro, don't die. It's here. You need to catch it. I will. Catch it, 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 catch it. Look, catch it. Safe? I think we got it. Yes, we got our drone back, but we couldn't capture all of the shots we needed before sunrise. The only part that we managed to capture quite well was the base of the crane. I would have loved to take more photos of the front side and get more detailed shots, but we couldn't. So we only have one full round at the top 
when the whole thing is visible, but we don't have any close-ups of the main front side of the crane, which could be troublesome. We don't know yet, but we'll find out. We came back home and before uploading 300 photos into Polycam, we went through all of them and removed any blurry or out of focus photo from them because those will only ruin our final result. Then we went to poly.cam and created a new capture, created a 3D model and uploaded all the images. The option that you see for object masking is only for small objects that you might rotate by hand. So for today's video, we're not gonna use it. For our detail, we're gonna select full because we want the highest quality. And for our sequential option, we're gonna turn it on because we took our photos in order. Polycam's done processing, so let's check it out. Oh, that's not bad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See that? Be better. But you see the middle part has a lot more detail and that's probably because we took a lot more photos. But there. do you see the top part? Yeah, it's missing some detail there. Mm -hmm. You know why? Uh, someone crashed our drone. <laughs> Damn, we couldn't take enough photos. <laughs> hey, it's okay though, we learned our lesson. So why don't we move on to the next subject, hey? We found this abolished wooden structure in the water. It was perfect. It was filled with texture and details from the long exposure to the water. And plus, we could train ourselves with the drone because it was virtually impossible to go around it with your phone. This time around, we wanted to use the 48 megapixel mode on the DJI Mini Pro 3, which allows you to take four times the resolution compared to the 12 megapixel sensor that is on the drone. Now, that might sound great, but there are a couple caveats to it. It's using a processing system called the quad Bayer filtering system to allow you to split the pixels from 12 to 48 and that sounds great but imagine those pixels are now receiving less light meaning that if you're shooting in darker conditions you might end up with a darker photo and a noisier image which is uh, no good it's not good for me but on top of that every time you take the photos it takes about a second to process them in mid-air which means that you're taking much less photos in the same amount of time that's also a no good. By the time we burned through three full batteries, we've only taken about 300 photos. Now Polycam allows you to upload a thousand photos and the more photos you have, the more detail you will have on your model. So you're telling me sharper images, less photos, or more photos that are not as sharp. Considering that we're shooting outdoors and the lighting is going to change if we spend too long taking photos of a single object, I'd say we have to take the most amount of photos we can in the shortest amount of time possible. And so we're gonna go for the normal mode next time. Plus, we're gonna use Adobe Lightroom to actually increase the sharpness in post, which is gonna help us at least a little bit. All right, you guys ready? Let's check it out. Oh, this is good. Okay, yeah, that's, this I mean, we got the entire got the model and and I really thought we would fail because there is water moving underneath No, it. but that's pretty good. Yeah, but we still need more detail. Can you zoom in? Yeah. Ooh. Our final and best attempt brought us to the totem poles near the University of British Columbia. We drove 20 minutes outside downtown Vancouver to come to UBC Museum of Anthropology. But it's closed for construction. I think it's here or here. I don't know where we are. We're looking for totem poles, right? Yes. Did we find it? I think so. Yeah, look at these totem poles. Dude, this is heaven. This is the most beautiful place I've ever been in. Look at that. Look at that. Wow. Wow, do you guys see the water? Beautiful. By now we know that we should take clear images and cover all angles. But the question is, where should we start? How should we end? How should we move? Now planning the trajectory of your shots can be extremely overwhelming. So let us give you some tips. Always maintain a constant orbit as you're going around your subject, whether you're using a phone or a drone. Keep your subject in the middle of the frame and in focus while gradually switching your distance from the subject and lowering or elevating your altitude. Let's say for example, you've already done a couple of orbits and now you want more detailed close-up shots from the back. Don't just move directly across. Keep your orbit and gradually switch your altitude and your distance from the subject while still taking photos. Let's use another example. If you need to tilt the camera up, lower your altitude and get closer to the subject, do each of those actions separately and take a photo in between. Don't do them all at once and then take a photo at the end of it. If you follow all these rules, you're gonna end up with a great looking model. I promise. I just wanna show you guys a little behind the scenes of how we're doing this. I'm using the DJI Mini Pro 3 tracking. I'm just dragging and selecting over my object and then it tracks that. So all I need to do is just press the capture button and then just move to the left and it automatically rotates around my subject. It's much simpler than trying to take this with your phone because your phone doesn't know how to track an object. When we were scanning the back of the house, we faced a couple of challenges. First, we only had one battery left. That meant 30 minutes of flight time. 
Second, there were trees covering the back of the house, preventing a full orbit. So what did we do? We realized that the best approach was to plan ahead. We identified our focus areas prior to shooting, which meant we were thinking where we're going to place our cameras in Unreal Engine 5. And we decided to take the most amount of photos from those areas. For the house, it meant we went high in the air, pointed the camera down at the exact angle we needed, and started going in half orbits around the house. Once we were done with an orbit, we would come down a lower altitude and then do another half orbit in the opposite direction. And then we repeated that a couple of times and then finished off with a couple of close-up shots. Now I'm going up, now I'm changing my level and height, and I need the head in there, so I'm gonna track a little bit higher this time, and it's gonna automatically go higher. And now I'm just gonna do another rotation. This time, before uploading the photos into Polycam, we used Adobe Lightroom to enhance our photo. This was inspired by William Foucher. Shout out to him. He does a lot of photogrammetry, so if you guys are interested in this topic, make sure you check him out. In Lightroom, we reduced the highlights, boosted the shadows, and slightly increased sharpness in our image. Now what's beautiful is that by doing this, we just balanced the overexposed areas of our image and also revealed the darker parts of the image while increasing the quality just a little bit. And the beauty of Adobe Lightroom is that we can now copy the settings we applied to this single image and apply it to everything else with a single click of a button. Once we were done, we exported all of these images as full quality JPEGs. Uploaded all the photos into Polycam and in less than 30 minutes, we got the result. Do you see the totem pole? Oh, do you see it? Do you see how good it is? Oh, I'm fast. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> this looks so freaking good. I honestly, we did not expect to get this quality. Let's talk about the cinematic. Now we needed to download our model. So we went to Polycam and hit export. There are more than 15 options to choose from both point cloud and mesh, depending on what you want to use it for. We've seen some people go crazy with 3D printing their models, but for us today, a GLTF will suffice. We brought the model into Blender and did a minimal cleanup for the vertices that we didn't need. Then we exported it again in GLB. Remember what we told you guys earlier? That after you process your models in Polycam, you can actually go ahead and customize their textures. First, we import our model. And then we're gonna load in all of the original textures that we received with our Polycam download. Then we're gonna take those textures and drop them onto the base color, the normal map, the roughness, and all that respectively. While you can always manually paint in the details that you want for the sake of speed and efficiency, we are gonna use the masks that are available within the software. These masks will allow you to add different materials based on the actual shape of your model. To use these masks, we need to help Substance Painter understand what the shape of our model looks like. And that means baking all the texture maps, such as ID, ambient occlusion, normal map, and others. Once you've done that, it is as simple as dropping a preset mask onto your model and then deciding what material will sit on top of it. We opted for moss, in our case, since we're in a forest. And you can see how it naturally fills in parts of your mesh depending on the shape of it. So we were looking for the best place to showcase the totem pole. And of course, the totem pole itself was already located in a forest. And that made sense for us to go to Epic Games and download the electric forest sample scene, which comes with beautifully scanned trees and plants, which was the ideal match for our totem pole. Within Unreal, we dropped our model in the scene and then decorated it with some Quixel assets that were already present in our scene. Now we had the standard cameras that we can control using a sequencer, but also we wanted to use our iPhone as a handheld camera to add that manual shake for extra realism. We did that using the LiveLink plugin in Unreal Engine and LiveLink vCam app on our iPhone. And then we put all of that in the sequencer and the result was exactly what you saw in the beginning of the video. Nice. If you made it up until this part of the video and we still haven't convinced you to use photogrammetry, let me tell you exactly why we didn't go ahead and just model all of this from scratch. Let's take the totem pole as an example. It belonged to the ancient Haida village and it represents family and clan membership. It's filled with intricate details and over the years it's developed fractures, cracks and other imperfections that tell a story of its history. Modeling this by hand would not only take a considerable amount of time, but we'd never, ever 
be able to recreate an exact replica of what was once crafted by hand. And if all of that still didn't convince you, let me tell you that doing photogrammetry was the only time in the past few weeks that we left this house and went outdoors. It was the best excuse to go out, have fun, explore, and still work. And now you know exactly how to bring any object of any size into your 3D software. You are welcome. And make sure you like this video, even if you don't like it. And only comment beautiful things about us. If you leave a bad comment, we're gonna remove it. Uh, do we want them to subscribe? Yes, yes. Please. Subscribe so we can make more money and get rich, buy some Louis Vuitton and you know, Gucci shoes and all that. All right, I'm done, all right, get I'm it, done. Get it, get it.